Hello, my friends. Once again, coming from St. Peter's, it's good to be with you in this unusual way, but such is our world right now. And we celebrate now the second Sunday of Easter in which Thomas makes his appearance and his astounding statement of faith, my Lord and my God. Our faith in the days of this plague goes up and down, I would imagine, depending on what news reports you listen to, what leaders' messages you hear. The faith of the disciples, too, wavered at times, remember? Sometimes during his ministry, they were very much with him to support him and protect him and help heal and preach. And then they all abandoned him at one point, maybe a couple at the cross, and here in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, they were gathered a week later out of fear, crippled by fear because they might be arrested, because they might be complicit with that rabble rouser who was executed the week before, crippled with fear, just like much of our lives today. And Jesus appears in the middle, and the first word out of his mouth is peace. What did that mean for the disciples and the first believers? Remember, peace is not an absence of war or pain and suffering. I mentioned last week that Jesus redeemed us from sin, but he didn't take away human imperfections. They still remain with us as millions suffer from this plague. Millions are losing their jobs, being stuck alone as a widow in the house all day, children climbing all over the cabinets. Our world is upside down. So what is the role of faith in our present day and situation? Well, go to the gospel and you'll notice that the gospel of John here again in chapter 20, doesn't say that Thomas stuck his finger in the wounds. Jesus invited them all, but he did not. It was the sight of Jesus that prompted his great statement of faith, my Lord and my God. The disciples rejoiced, which is reiterated here in chapter 2 of the Acts of the Apostles when they showed the common life of the first community of believers, where they dedicated themselves to the teaching and preaching and holding all things in common and eating with jubilation, which means that even though they were being ostracized in some ways, they were also at peace with one another because of their faith in this Lord. That first word from the mouth of Jesus, peace, again. Our belief in Jesus doesn't take away pain and suffering. What our faith does do is allow us to make sense out of life when everything is not rosy. Faith allows us and gives the courage to us and enables us to carry the cross of having kids home all day for how many more weeks now? The other day I was on the phone with a friend of mine from another state, a, a young mother, and they have three little ones, and she was crying her eyes out. Their kids are seven, five, and two, and she's downstairs trying to clean the bathroom while a war is going on upstairs. And I'm supposed to help them learn. And she was just in tears. Millions are bearing this invasion of their bodies, thousands to the point of death. And what of life in the church without the Eucharist for millions? This, my friends, is suffering, all of this. And this is also why we need a strong faith and not allow ourselves to be crippled by fear. Faith brings us peace in our hearts. We just have to accept the fact that we are not in control of life. And that's a challenge for every one of us. 
Yet when we surrender to Jesus, as did Thomas and the other disciples and the first community of believers, peace enters our hearts. I chose to come into St. Peter's in the church with my good buddy here. You know Francis, of course, and you know how much I love him and admire him. And I want to share with you a story. You know, he was well known to have begun whenever he preached with, May the Lord give you peace. And the words of Jesus, peace be with you, is what prompted my writing that book and play last year, Messenger of Peace. His whole life was mirrored in Christ as reconciler, as messenger of peace. And so I want to share with you a story from one of the biographies of Francis. In fact, it's the first one ever written, right about 20 years after his death by Thomas of Chilano. And this is a story about his canonization in Assisi in 1228, just two years after he died. And I share this part of the story of Francis with you because it's filled with images of spring and hope. We need a great deal of hope right now, do we not? We need the Lord Jesus. We need examples and images of prayer and people of faith like we hear in the, the scriptures today. It could be, yes, a look back at a medieval celebration of canonization, but it could also be a picture of us, the community of Sension, when one of these days, and hopefully not too far away, we will again gather in that magnificent church of ours and celebrate like the medievals here. So this is my Easter gift to you, praying that God give you and all of us and our world the great gift of peace. So from Assisi in 1228, we read. The Pope had gathered in Assisi in a piazza with bishops and other notables and the nobility and hundreds and hundreds of other people and proclaimed that in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Francis should be declared a saint. And there arose the cry of many people praising God. The earth echoes the booming sound and the air is filled with jubilation and the ground is soaked with tears of joy. They sing new songs and the servants of God rejoice in the melody of the Holy Spirit. Sweet sounding instruments are playing and hymns are sung with musical voices and a very sweet fragrance is flowing everywhere, and an even more pleasant melody is echoing around the people, moving everyone deeply. The day is breaking, colored with radiant sunbeams. There are green branches of olive trees and other branches of other trees, and these are all dressed, these people, in festive clothing, brightly shining, while the blessing of peace gladdens the spirits of all people. As the Lord said to his fr frozen disciples, crippled with fear, peace be with you, my friends. We are never alone. We are always together in the Lord Jesus. And when we surrender, as I pray for you every day and for our world, we can be at peace. May God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And through the intercession of Francis of Assisi, may God give you peace.